Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our MCQ series for ARD and the BART exam. And for today's topic, I've, uh, I've chosen on 50 MCQs uh, from Yojana and Pulchetra magazine for the month of January, February and March. Please don't forget to subscribe as well as you can press the bell icon for further notifications. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you've liked the video as well. The first question here is on as per the unit budget of 2020-21. How many action plans have been introduced for agriculture, irrigation, and rural development? The options given here are 14, number 10, 16, 20, and 13. The right answer here is 16. In the union budget session, uh, the finance minister has proposed 16 action plans, which is based only for the agriculture, irrigation, and the rural development. Right. So, uh, in her budget speech, she proposed 16 action points, uh, action plans. Uh, it's mostly done to boost the agriculture as well as the farmers' welfare. So, and she also referred to as to it as the aspirational India, and uh, it has been and the three main model has been proposed alongside it. The first one is the Model Agriculture Land Leasing Act of 2016. Number two is the Model Agriculture Produce and Livestock Marketing Act of 2017, and the third one is Model Agriculture Produce and Livestock Contact contract farming and services which held in the promotion and facilitation act of 2018 right so the second question is as per the union budget state which of the following is true on blue economy remember blue economy is related to fisheries right and uh, so the statements are under the blue economy the target of export of fish by the year 2024 to 25 is kept at rupees 1 lakh crore the second one here is the cultivation of algae and seaweeds and cage culture would be promoted. Number third says around 477 sagar mitras and 100 fish farming producers organization to involve youth in fisheries extension. So the right answer for this is one and two. So the option number B is right for this as cultivate uh, as there are about 500 fish farmers producer organization will also be uh, used or would also propose it to involve the youth in the fisheries extension. Some points, important points on blue economy are the one lakh crore fisheries exports to be achieved by the year of 2024 to 25 and around 200 lakh tons fish produ production was also targeted by the year of 2022 to 23 and around the three, uh, 407, uh, 400 and sorry it's supposed to be 477 Sagarmitras and around 500 uh, fish farmer producer organizations will also be involved in the youth and fishery extension as well and growing of algae seaweed and cage culture will also be promoted through this blue economy other than that all around and there will be an all round framework for the development of management and conservation of the fish fishery resources and the third one here is what is dhania lakshmi yojana related to the options given are women's seed related programs, number B is women's skill development programs, number C is women education programs, number D is organic farming programs, number E is LPG connections to poor households. The right answer for this is women's seed related programs. Right, so, so let's talk about this yojana. So it is most related to uh, the women for encouraging or to for encouraging in the reed seed related programs. So this Proposed to strengthen the natural farming as well as the integrated farming in rainfed areas for irrigation, right? So it has also been uh, brought up in the budget as well as uh, it will this uh, According to this budget this whole ocean will be mostly focused will be focused on the self-reliance of the women as uh, and which led to the form of these yojana and under this scheme will women's will be specially linked to the women seed related programs and so through this uh, uh, yojana the women farmers will be encouraged and will uh, be given training and uh, quality checking of the seeds and and as well as in the scientific farming along with that we will be also they will be also given loans as well as financial assistance right and they will also help them in involve involvement in the large scale and various storage schemes as well so the fourth Question here is when was Pradhan Mantri Sahaj Bishri Ghar Yojana launched? The options are 2013, number B, 2016, number C, 2018, number, C, seven, number D is 2017, number E is 2019. The right answer to this is 
2017 right so this is related to electricity okay and it has been uh, done to provide access uh, to all the rural as well as the urban households where for the connectivity of electricity right so it was launched in the year 2017 on September 25th so other than that the scheme will also provide us solar photovoltaic uh, based standalone systems for the unelectrified households which are located in the remote and inaccessible villages or habitations right so these are something on this Yojana and number fifth, Krishi Uran will be launched under which of the following? So, do you have to answer? Uh, so, this Krishi Uran will be launched under which of the following ministries? Number A is Ministry of Rural Development, number B is Ministry of Jal Shakti, number C is Ministry of Civil Aviation, number D, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, number E is Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. So, the right answer for this is Civil Aviation. And see, to boost the agriculture exports, the Civil Aviation Ministry will introduce this Krishi Uran, which will help in the export of these agriculture goods, not only nationally but also internationally. And apart from this Krishi Uran, the Indian Railway help has also set up this thing called Kisan Rail, right, which will help in the transportation of the perishable goods. Right, so and these focus will also help in the, the farmers, the Indian farmers, to help link, uh, in to help link and boost the export um, facilities, and will make the global as well as local market through establishment and institutional supply chains. So, which will enable them to have a higher price for their produce. Right, and let's go to our sixth question, strive, which is also which if you break it down, we can say it as skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement uh, and this the question says here it is strive is being funded by which of the following organizations so out of these organization which is the one that has been funding this strike so the options given here are world bank b is nabart number c is world economic forum number d is undp Number E is World Skill Organization. The right answer is World Bank. So World Bank is along is responsible for the funding of the uh, scheme, right? And the main or the primary objective is improving the relevance and efficiency skills training provided through the Industrial Training Institute as well as the apprenticeships. So remember this, guys. These it, it is the centrally sec, central sector scheme, right? And it has a budget outlay of around. 2200 crore, which covers four resulted areas. The first one is it, ha it aims to improve in the performance of the ITI. Number second, it increases the capacities of state governments to support the ITI and apprenticeship training. Number third, it improves teaching as well as learning. And number fourth, it improves and broadens the apprenticeship training. So these are the four resulted areas under this uh, project, right? Let's go to our th next question, right? So when was the Skill India campaign launched? The options given here, 2018, 2016, 2014, 2015, and 2017. The right answer is 2015. So let's talk about the Skill India campaign. It was launched on July 15 of 2015 by the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the main aim is to train over 40 crore people in India in different skills and it aims by the year of 2022 so it is managed by the national remember this point managed by the National Skill Development Corporation of India right so under this campaign we have a various schemes and projects or programs but uh, the main schemes will, or the major schemes include the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. So this Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, it is a very it, uh, it was successful, and it was also the pilot project of the Skill India campaign. So it was also launched in the same year of 2015. So other than that, we have schemes of Jan uh, Shikshan Santhan GSS for skill development, we have scheme for creation improvement of training infrastructure. The National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme, Rural Self Employment and Training Institutes, 
and we have Din Dhir Upadhyaya and Ramin Kaushalya Yojana as well. So these are some of these major schemes under the Skill India campaign. So don't forget to check out there uh, when it was launched as well as the main objective or why it was launched of all these schemes, okay? So let's go to our world, next question. World Skills International Competition is going to be held in which of the following country? So the options given here are India, Kazan, Malaysia, Korea, China. The right answer for this is China. So the World Skills uh, International it is uh, done every year so that to uh, it is a platform where the people or the youth will come from all over the world to demonstrate or portray their talents, right? So even India also has this camp, uh, competition called the India Skills, which was also uh, done every year. And last year as well, uh, the World Skills International Competition was held in Kazan, and in the upcoming year, it will be held in China, right? So next, we'll go to our ninth question, which is says, how much percent increase has been seen in 2020's budget allocation as compared to previous year's budget allocation related to the Ministry of Women and Child Affairs? So uh, the focus here is on the women and child welfare, okay? And so the options given here are 20%, number B, 5%, C, 11%, number D, 14%, number E, 8%. The right answer for this is D, which is 14%, as there has been a 14% increase in the budget allocation if you compare it to the previous year. Right, so uh, there is a sum of around 28,600 crore has been set aside specifically for the women for the next fiscal in the budget. Right, so there has been a 14% increase. Let's go to our 10th question. According to the budget announcements on the basis of storage and marketing under agriculture, which of the following statement is true? Number one here is AC Farmer Goods train will run for transportation. Number B, Krishi Uran will be launched and will be operated nationally only. Number three is the government has announced introduction of Kisan rail services through PPP for transportation of farm produce. Right, so the right answer of the the incorrect statement for this is number two Kishi Iran will be launched under this uh, for the basis of storage and marketing purposes in agriculture but it will not only be operated nationally but also it will be operated internationally right so uh, the option B which is number two is the correct answer Right, so the government, uh, we have three points under this uh, storage and marketing values for under the agriculture. The first one is the Kisan Rail through PPP transportation for farm produce. The AC farmer goods will also be used and we have refrigerated coaches will also be attached in express and for good trains. And all, as well, there was also proposed for to create a seamless uh, national coal supply chain. And Krishi Uran will also be launched under this and it will be uh, operated both nationally as well as internationally and this will also enable uh, transportation uh, facilities even in the northeastern regions and other tribal regions of the country right and so this Krishi Iran will also make it possible to, to sell the uh, agriculture products abroad right so now, now let's go to our 11 question uh, statements on the union budget for livestock so the statement here is livestock has reported 8% increase during the last five years. The coverage of artificial insemination will be raised from present 30% to 70%. The budget has set a target of doubling milk production by the year 2025. So guys, all of these statements are true under the union budget of 2020-2021, right? So number D, option number D, it says all of the above is the correct answer, right? So let's talk about this uh, briefly. Livestock has been reported 8% increase, remember that. And as well as India is also the largest producer of milk and the budget has also targeted an, a doubling of the milk production by the year 2025. Okay, and milk processing capacity will also be raised under this around, around 800, 108 metric tons from the current 500. So it's gonna be doubling the milk processing capacity. We check the uh, data. Right, and now there are going to be a coverage of the artificial insemination will be also raised from 30% to 70%, and this convergence of the MN regas will also be done through the development of these pastures. 
So question number 12 says, this is important question. So the share of the agriculture and allied sectors in gross value added, GVA of the country, the current prices has declined from 18.22. What data in the year of 2019 and 2020? So basically you have to fill in the blank, right? So options here are A, 16%, B, 12%, C, 10.3%, D, 15%, number E is 17.5%. The right answer for this is 16%. There has been an increase or, de sorry, decrease or decline in the GVA under the share of agriculture and allied sectors. Allied sectors will also include forestry, horticulture, agriculture, livestock, animal husbandry, fishes, and all of that will be included under this. Right, so there has been a decrease or the decline in the, as we compare it from the 2014, 2015 to 2019, 2020. So there has been a decline of 16%, right? So there has so the economic share of the agriculture and allied sectors and the gross value added of the country at current prices has declined from 18.2 to 16.5 percent so this is the more that one was the most approximate number so it is actually 16.5 percent right so number 13 here is which of the following mobile app did the ministry of finance and national informatics center have jointly uh, developed to enable common people form uh, locating financial services touch points so the options here are pusa fishy number b jandan tarjak number c fishy jandan number d agri market number e and the sound right answer for this guys is number b with jandan tarjak right so this is based under this program of financial inclusion okay and these will enable the people to have or it will this app or this mobile app will act as a guide for the people to uh, locate the various financial institutes in and around the area right or they will have they will pinpoint the location in the uh, in the country and through this app people will be able to locate the places easily so the department it is combined form of the Department of the Financial Services as well as the Ministry of Finance and National Informatics. So remember, this is a part of the Financial Inclusion Initiative, right? And now, let's go to our next question. 14 says, when did the government of India launch this national infrastructure pipeline? Okay, and the options here are January 2020, November 2019, September 2018, December 2019, and number E june 2017 the right answer for this guys is december it was recent it was in 2019 december right and this was basically done um uh but it was done by the government of india and around worth it, it's worth about 103 lakh crore okay remember this and it consists of more than 6500 projects as well and right and these the national infrastructure pipeline it improves the ease so it will help or elevate uh, the livelihood of the people and it will ease the living of each individual in the country as well so other than that it will also bring the generic sectoral reforms and development operations and maintenance of these infrastructural projects right let's go to our 15th question which is being the atyodaya yoshka is associated with which of the following Okay, so the options given here are elevation of poverty, education of women, C, the programming, D, uh, financial inclusion, number D, E, is for culture storage. So this uh, yojana is related to elevation of poverty. So this is under the National Livelihood Mission, uh, which was launched by the Ministry of the Rural Development and Government, Government of India in the year 2011 on June. Right, so this was a reconstructed version of Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarrozgar Yojana, right? And this was renamed in November 2015 as this Deen Atyodaya Yojana. And so this will aim or focus on an effective institutional platforms for the rural poor, enabling them to increase or it will basically just increase the uh, livelihood of the people and it will also increase the household income through a sustainable livelihood enhancement improvement 
right? So, and it will be given access to the financial services as well. So, this is something about this Yosha. And now, let's go to our 16th question. According to the National Health Policy of 2017, the mortality rate of under 5 children per 1,000 births, right, will be reduced by how much by the year of 2025? There, uh, the options here are 33, number B is 40, number C is 23, number D is 50, number E is 18%. So the right answer for this is 23, right? And the policy, it also emphasizes on reduction in the mortality rates under the five children to 23, right? So the, birth, the mortality rate will be 23 upon 1,000 right birth rates by the year of 2025 so we have to reduce it it means uh, it aims the policy aims at reducing the infant mortality right by the year of 28 by 2019 right and the reduction of the maternal mortality rates to 100 by 2020 so these are on the basis of from 1000, all right? Let's go to our 17th question. When was the Nikshi Portion Yojana, a direct benefit transfer DBT for TB patients launched? Number A is April 2019, number B is Jan uh, 2018, July 2017, D is April 2018, and um, number E is October 2016. The right answer for this is uh, April, which is, which is uh, D, April 2018. So uh, it is a direct, so this Nikshi Portion Yojana, it is a direct benefit transfer scheme. There is mainly for the uh, nutritional support of the TB patients, right, which is rolled out on April 2019 by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So the scheme, it is centrally sponsored scheme, it is, which is under this national health mission, remember this, right? And these schemes, so remember this again, this is not related to the portion mission, which is also known as the portion of young mission, right, which is an initiative of the Ministry of Women and Child Development, so don't get confused, okay, and this scheme is implemented in all the states in, and in all the union territories. So what we'll be getting from this scheme is that around 500 per month from each notified TV patient will be uh, given a financial incentive, will also be given to all the the patient and as the scheme is registered under the direct benefit transfer incentives can be distributed in each cash or in kind right so it will either it will be through an other enabled bank accounts or through the DBT. so 18 says the selected incorrect statement on portion of yan so the there are three statements given the first one is there were five themes under portion of 2019 Portion Abhyan will strive to achieve a reduction in stunting from 38.4% to 25% by 2022. A part of Portion Abhyan, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare also started the Anemia Mukt Bharat AMB campaign. The right answer for this is number D, which is all of the above. Uh, Portion Abhyan, it is done to address the malnourished uh, or the uh, problem of malnourishment or malnutrition in the country. So the goals of Abhyan, they are mainly focused on the nutritional status of children uh, from the year of 0 to 6 uh, years as well as adolescent girls and pregnant women. Right. So under these, on the portion, we have five themes. The first one is hygiene, sanitation and safe drinking water. Number six, second, anemia prevention. Number D, number third is uh, direct diversity complementary food and feeding. Number four, diarrhea management. Number fifth is thousand days day care. Right, so under this, as a part of this portion of Yan, this Ministry of Health and Family Welfare also started this campaign called the Anemia Mukt Bharat. Right, so these are something on portion of Yan. So, Next question here is under the mission of Indra Dhanush, how many diseases has been targeted on the immunization program for children up to the age of two years? So guys, the right answer for this is number seven. So seven diseases has been mainly focused for the immunization program for the children, which is under the two years. So the seven programs, this are for the diseases of bacteria, for whooping cough, for tetanus, tuberculosis, 
polio, hepatitis B, as well as measles. So the ultimate aim or the goal of this mission is to ensure a full immunization and we'll, we'll be providing all the vaccines for the children up to the age of two years and also for the pregnant women, right? So these are something on the uh, mission in the news. So the next question here is on the question here is on the which of the following schemes are the cash benefits provided to pregnant women directly in the bank accounts based on direct benefit transfer, right? So the right answer for this is Pradhan Mantri uh, Matru Vandana Yojana. Let's talk about this scheme a bit. Sorry. So this it is a, a maternity benefit program which has been implemented implemented in all the districts of the country and uh, with the provision of the National Food Security Act of 2013. So it started on the year 2017 on January, right? So this is a direct benefit transfer scheme under which this cash transfer are provided to all the pregnant women in the bank account and it will help or we will help or help or meet their financial needs in terms of the nutritional nutritional basis, right? So it will also help compensate for their wage losses as well. Number 21 says E Ayushidi project is under which of the following states. So uh, out of all these states, which of the states is responsible for, uh, for this uh, implementing of this project, right? So the right answer for this from all these states, the right answer is Gujarat. So Gujarat is responsible for this project known as the ERU Dushi. Right? So this was a uh, supply this will help in the supply chain management application, right? So this the main objective is to ascertain the need of various direct warehouses and such that all the required materials, drugs and are will be constantly available. So Gujarat government has implemented this project known as the EIU edition. Let's go to another one. Uh, question number 22 says, Anganwadi services will launch in Egypt the following. So the options given here are 1988, number B is 1975, number C 2000, number D 1977, number E 1995. The right answer for this is 1985. It is a fairly old uh, services. And let's go to another question, which is on according to the National Family Health Survey of 2015-2016, what percentage of children below the years of age five are found to be stunted? The right answer for this, guys, is 38%. So around 38% of uh, under the survey, 38% of the children below the age of five years were found to be stunted. Let's go to another question. Here is an uh, question number 24 under the portion of Yan. Which of, what is the target year for malnutrition free India? Options given here are 2025, B is 2022, C is 2030, D is 2024, number E is 2021. So guys, if you guys know the answer for this, don't forget to comment by the comment section and let me know. Right, so now let's go to another question, which is 2020, uh, question number 25, Unmole, right? So it is related to which of the following? A is lawyers, B farmers, C is health workers, D is teachers and E is banker. The right answer for this is health workers. So this unmole is related to health workers. So this unmole is also known as the auxiliary nurse and midwives online. It is an it is an application which has been developed to equip public health workers to register the pregnant women and encourage institutional birthing, monitor immunization program for the newborn as well. That is so it is under the thousand five the National Rural Health Mission, they are, it was also launched, which focused on improvising the public health care in villages. 26, question number 26 says, which of the following state has launched the new route to program? The options here are Kerala, we have Rajasthan, we have, we have C, which is Andhra Pradesh, number D, which is Tamil Nadu, we have number E, which is Punjab. The right answer here, guys, is Andhra Pradesh. So Andhra Pradesh is responsible for the launching of this Niru Chetu program. So this, the government, uh, it is done so that to make, uh, so that to they will make the state Andhra Pradesh a drought-proof state. Remember this, and the 
program will also has a strong emphasis on improving the irrigation and focus on ensuring water supply to all the drought prone areas. Right, so the uh, main priorities of this will be repair, renovation, maintenance of irrigation assets. So remember the point that this is related to water and to, to irrigation through the drought proof state, right? And these will are some of the activities that will be done under this mission. So number 27, when was the National Skill Development Mission formulated? Right, so the options here are 2015, 2014, 2016, 2017, 2013. The right answer here is 2014. Remember, the National Skill Development was formulated on the year of 2014, but it was launched on the year of 2015. Right, so it was launched by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship on the on July 2014, and the main aim is the convergence across states and uh, sectors in terms of skill training activities or skill development activities. Question number 28 is select the incorrect statement on Kalya Kulp Initiative. The options given here are it began in the year 2016. Number two is health facilities are accessed and scored on a number of parameters and every year the highest scoring facilities at each level receive recognition through Kalia Kulp Awards. Right? And number three is it aims at improving the infrastructure, unkeep hygiene and sanitation and infection control practices. So the inquiry statement is number one, which is it was formed in the year of 2015. Okay. And uh, so it was done by the Health and Family Welfare Ministry and it was launched at its national and initiative of India 2015 May to promote the cleanliness and enhance the quality of the public health facilities. There are three main uh, objectives under this, which is to promote hygiene, cleanliness, and infection in all the public health care, right, and to provide them a best way health care to the uh, whole of the country. And another one is to inculcate a culture of ongoing assessment and peer review of the performance which is completely related to the health hygiene and cleanliness right so and another one is we will be creating and sharing the sustainable practices related to the improvement of the cleanliness in the public as well as in the other sectors of the health facilities as well 29 question number 29 is under the ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of jal shakti sudden and integrated scheme swatch the uh, swast sarvatra on which of the following year right so options here are 2019 number b is 2014 number c is 2016 number d is 2017 number b uh, number e is 2012 so the right answer for this is c which is 2016 uh, the Swatch Swastha Sarvatra, that is an inter uh, ministerial joint initiative between two ministries, which is uh, the Ministry of Renewable Water and Sanitation, which is also known as Ministry of Jal Shakti, and as well as the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So, the main objective is to build and leverage achievements in two complementary programs, which is the Swatch Bharat Mission and Public Health Initiatives. So, the objective is to strengthen the community health. Right, so and we have around in centers in about 708 ODF blocks in, in, in and around across the country, and is mainly focused on the cleanliness and the hygiene of the people. Uh, question number 30 As per UNICEF report of 2011, what is the percentage of children's death that is declined directly linked to the contaminated water, lack of sanitation, and inadequate hygiene? So, the, uh, the percentage of the children's death were about 90% guys which as per the UNICEF report of 2011 so this was in India so this was mainly due to the contaminated water lack of sanitation as well as the inadequate hygiene of the children so number 31 on the Amrut mission a significant progress has been made in the fecal sludge management and a coverage of how many projects have been completed in sewage and septage management so the options given here are 637, 500, 771, 1000, and 453. The right answer for this is 637. So under this, 600 and, under this mission, 637 projects have been completed. So this Amrut mission, if you're going to break it down, full form is Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation. So it is, uh, it is a new avatar for this Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission. Okay? 
and these will focus on mainly water supply, sewage, storm water drainage to reduce flooding, non monetized uh, motorized urban transport as well as green spaces or parks. So under this we have around 337, 637 missions or the projects which have been completed under this mission. So the next question here is on the Swatch Surveyction. It is an innovative survey or which is conducted under which of the following ministries in urban areas. So out of all these ministries, which of the following is responsible? So uh, the right answer for this is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, right? So uh, don't get confused with the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation because Ministry of this Urban Development is responsible for the survey in the urban areas, whereas the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, which is also known as the Ministry of Jal Shakti, this is, uh, it is responsible for the rural areas. So it was launched on May 2016 and the main objective is to encourage a large scale citizen participation and also to create an awareness among all the sections of society about the importance of working together through making towns and cities a better place to live in. So this was the main aim or the objective of this survey, right? Now let's go to our number 33 question, which India at the Paris Climate Change agreement to reduce its carbon emission by 33 to 35 percent by each of the following year. So uh, the options here are 2030, 2025, 2027, 2045, and 2035. The right answer for this is 2030. So India at the uh, Paris Climate Change Agreement, they said that they will be reducing its carbon emission 30 by 33 to 35 percent by the year of 2030. Right. So. Uh, it was a necessity act or implementation for the carbon capture with uh, afforestation of the degraded landscapes with nature, native species regulations of the LVLC change and also decarbonization which will be done through a large scale implementation of renewable and sustainable energy alternatives as well. Right, so number 24 here is what is the full form of NCAP uh, which is an so this NCAP it is an effort of the in this effort towards creating an environmental safeguard, right? So the uh, options here are National Clean Air Project, National Clean Air Program, National Car Assessment Program, National Clean Air Protocol, National Car Assessment Project. So the right answer for this is National Clean Air Program, right? And these it is a it is launched by the government. It is a long term and time bound strategy to achieve 20 to 30 percent reduction in PM10 and PM2.5 concentration by the year of 2024, right? The main aim, objective of this is that the comprehensive mitigation actions to prevent, to control and abatement of the air pollution that is most related to the air pollution, right, and the air quality monitoring of as well. So it will also augment the air quality monitoring as well as strengthen the awareness and the capacity building activities based on air pollution. So number 36, India launched the Integrated Education for Disabled Children IEDC in which of the following year. So the options here are 1918, 1956, 1974, 1988 and 2000. The right answer for this guys is 1974. Okay. And so this was a centrally sponsored scheme launched in the year 1974 by the Department of Social Welfare. And under this scheme, the handicapped children, they, are, uh, they will have an integrated learning system, right? And 100% assistance will also be provided to the states and the territories of the children who are also suffering from these handicap situations, right? So basically, uh, this, this is mostly or it's focused on the handicapped children. And 37 says, question number 37 says, consider the following statement on Bhare Bharat, Bhare Bharat and select the correct statement. So the sub, it is a sub program of Sarva Siksha Abhyan and it is continued under the new integrated scheme Surya Siksha to ensure quality of the foundation years of schooling. Objectives of the program are to promote early reading and writing comprehensive skills in children and also basic numeracy skills. So the number two, statement number two is wrong and we're going to discuss. So the right answer for this is one entry which is C, right? So this Bari Bharat, Bari Bharat is a sub-program of Sarva Siksha Abhyan, 
right? That is a new integrated scheme of Samagra Siksha, not the senior Siksha, remember this, right? So it is mostly done to promote reading and writing and comprehensive skills, uh, mostly focused on the children and also basic numeracy skills. So number 38, based on the reforms taken up by, taken up by the Indian government for school education, select the odd one out, right? So you have to, out of all these, you have to select the odd one out, the one which is not related to the uh, reforms taken up by the Indian government, especially for the school education, okay? So the options given are here are Nishta, number B is Dhruv, uh, Shagun, Diksha, and Anil. The right answer, or the incorrect, the odd one out here is Anil, as all of these, these are related to school education programs, but Anil is not related, so let's talk about it. So Nishta it is also known as a national initiative for school heads and teachers, right? So Dhruv is the Pradhan Mandri Innovative Learning Program. Shagun is one of the uh, largest integrated online junction. Diksha is a, di a digital infrastructure for knowledge sharing. And we have other two, which is under for the secondary education, uh, which is known as the Unified District Information System for Education Plus and Operation Digital Board. Right, so this UNIL, it is not related to the school education, but it is uh, um, it is um, a smart assistant which is, has been developed by the Tamil Nadu uh, government and which is who also partnered with Anna University, right? So it is basically a Tamil smart assistant. So question number 30, uh, 39 is the program called EQUIP, which is also known as the Education for Equality, Operation and Inclusion Program which is a five-year plan has been released in by has been released by which of the following? The right answer for this, guys, is Ministry of Human Resources Development, right? So let's talk about it. So the Department of Higher Education of the HRD Ministry, they have a vision plan known as this EQUIP. So it will help in ushering the transformation of India's higher education system. So it's basically focused on the education system, but on the higher education system, right? Let's go to our 40th question. What does T stand for in STRIDE? So this STRIDE, it was launched for promoting research by faculty and creation of the new knowledge. So the options here are transition B, transdisciplinary C, transforming D, teaching, and D, E, translation. Number B is transdisciplinary. So this is the right answer. And let's talk about this. So in it's a fairly new project. So in 2019, the university or the UGC they approved a new scheme known as the Scheme for Transdisciplinary Research for India's Developing Economy, which is known as STRIDE, which help, which will be helping and supporting a relevant local need, locally need-based, nationally important and globally significant research projects. So this will uh, have a basic and applied transformational action research and programs to contribute to the national priorities, which will focus mainly on the human development. Question number 41, by how much percent did the India's draft national education policy aim to increase the gross enrollment ratio, which is known as the GR, in higher education by the year 2035? Right, so the options here are 50%, number B, 40%, number C, 60, number D, 70, number E, 80%. The right answer for this is 50%, as the Indus draft the national policy aimed to increase the GR in the higher education by this 50% by the year of 2035. So it means that uh, four graduates, so Basically, the four graduates in the world will be a part of the Indian higher education, right? And currently, the GR is at 26.3%, right? So, and doubling it in the next 15 years will require significant reforms as well as education level. So, uh, currently, the India's GR is even lower than the global average, which is around 36.7%. So, India will aim at in, uh, rising this GR level by 50% by the year of 2035. Number 42, when was Unified District Information System for Education Plus first initiated? So right there, out of all these options, the right answer here is 20, 20, like 2012 to 2013. Right, so this, uh, which is also known as the UDIS, it was initiated in 2000, 2012 to 13. What is an integrating uh, integration for the element, elementary education, right, and for the secondary education as well. 
So it is one of the largest information si uh, management information systems on school education, which covers about 1.5 million schools and 8.5 million teachers, as well as 250 million children. So the main aim for this is it will ensure quality, credibility, and timely availability of the information from the schools in the country that will be VAM, B-U-D-I-S-E, which has been launched. So remember guys, we have already talked about this D-U-D-I-S-E uh, in when it is a reform or the program based for this school secondary education. And not Remember, not for the higher education, okay? So number 43, how many institutions are under private sector, uh, which has been declared as the IOE, which is also known as the Institution of Eminence? The right answer for this out of these is number B. So around 10 private sectors, so 10 institutions on the private sector as well as 10 institutions on the public sector has been declared as Institute of Eminence. So this is a recognition scheme for higher education institute in India, which is set by the University Grant Commission right in the year of 2017. So each IOE will be eligible to receive about rupees 1,000 crores in the duration of next five years. So which of the following is among the theme of budget 2020-2021? The options here are aspiring India, number is aspiring the nation, number B is society development, number C is uh, growing India, number D caring society, number D, number E is aspiring India. So the right answer for this is caring society, which is one of the uh, three themes of the union budget of 2020-2021. Right, so we have three themes, which is aspirational India, and the B is economic development, and we have caring society. On the aspirational India, we have agriculture, irrigation, rural development, health, wellness, and water sanitation. We have education as well as skills. So under this economic, we have industries, commerce, and investments, infrastructure. We have also have economy, caring society, women, child, and social welfare, culture, tourism, and we have environmental and climate change so these are three broad themes and under this we have we have subdivided the categories under which they will be working on so we have question number 45 is according to the union budget of 2020 how many pump sets linked to solar panels will be given to the farmers right so out of these the right answer is 20 lakh uh, it is un done under the expansion of the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Uttan Malbian which is also known as the PM Kusu scheme and 20 lakh farmers will be provided a fund to set up trans standalone solar pumps. So number 46, so Kisan Rail will be set up by the Indian Railway on PPP for transportation of which type of goods? Right, we, I think we've already discussed the options given here are perishable consumer capital goods, food waste and a lot of the above. The right answer is perishable goods. Right, so they will be responsible for transportation of these perishable goods through this Kisan wheel, which is set up by the Indian Railway. These, the next question here is, which scheme has been launched to end the TB by the year of 2025 in the country? So these, out of these, the right answer to this is number D, which is TB Hareva Desh Jigeka. The center scheme has committed to eradicate the TB losses by the year of 2025. So a national plan has been done to achieve this. So in last year, in the year of 20 September, last year, in the month of September, the campaign TB Harega and Deshidega was launched along with the survey known as the National TB Prevalence Survey. Okay, so remember this. And so select the incorrect statement on the basis of Pradam Marsh scheme. The Union Minister of Human Resource Development launched the University Grant Scheme for a merge, right? So, to mentor the National Accreditation and Assessment Council Accreditation Experiment Institution for promoting quality assurance in secondary education. Number three, the scheme will be operational hub through hub and scope model. So, uh, the incorrect statement of this is number two. So, number one and number three is correct, right? So, uh, actually, it will. It is the main objective is to mentor the accreditation and assessment council and uh, accreditation experiment institution for promoting quality not in the secondary education but in the higher education okay so this is the incorrect statement right so uh, the option number 
correct answer for this is number two only. Our 49 person says how much allocation has been made in nutrition related programs in the fiscal year B1. So the right answer for this is number B, which is around 28,600 crore. So uh, 28,600 crore will be allocated by the government for the women linked programs. Right, so this is something on that and now let's go to our 50th question with reference to the na national wide artificial insemination program which is also known as the niap uh, consider the following statement the first one is it is a generic operation program number b is a it covers all these upper vines number three is it aims to enhance the milk production so you have to select the correct answer the right answer for this is all of the above right now let's just talk about it so it was uh, launched by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi on September 11th of 2019 and it covers 600 chosen districts. So remember this under this is done to in summit over 1 crore per vine and in 6 months and they will earn a tag with Hashu Adhar. Right? So and it is a unique identification provided to the animals. Remember this and it is a genetic operation program it will cover all weeds of bovine it will also enhance the milk production and it is will also use a low cost uh, technology for improving the genetic merit uh, of milk animals and we will have a high quality seed okay so these are some this was something on the nationwide insemination program well that's all for today guys uh, don't forget to subscribe and please press the bell icon and if you've liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well as you can share it with your friends who have given the exam.